This is the wilderness, the blank parts of your map, and how they can be so much more than a handful of green and brown hexes. Grab your rations, we're going into the wild. Hey explorers, Bob here, and welcome to Bob World Builder. As some of you may know, I love the outdoors and today's Earth Day. So it seemed like the perfect time to introduce some world building topics and game mechanics that I will be expanding on in many future videos. So be sure to subscribe and join the now over 3000 people in this community. I am blown away by the support and it's super encouraging for me to continue making the best videos I possibly can. I actually just wrapped up filming some behind the scenes footage for Patreon and that will be launching in May 2020. Also, this video is sponsored by the Lone Hunter's Guide to Bushcraft by Massimo Tartaro. A huge D&D 5e supplement that I will be referencing for a bunch of these topics now available on the Dungeon Masters Guild. As always, there's an affiliate link in the description if you'd like to check it out and help me make better videos. All nature exists in gradients. Write that down. And at a very basic level, all terrestrial ecosystems are the product of regional patterns of temperature and precipitation. Cold, hot, dry, wet. And these extremes are where most of our wilderness lies because that is where conditions are least favorable for life. For example, let's start with a desert. It is the driest type of environment and it is very hot. So very few organisms can actually survive there. Cacti, some grasses, bugs, birds, and reptiles. Organisms that need minimal water and rely on sun and shade to regulate their body temperature. So dragonborn, lizard folk, turtles, yuan-ti, aracocra, kenku, insect folk if you have them, tiefling, and fire ganasi would all do pretty well here. Though any other settlements will be singular, remote, and tightly packed around a carefully guarded water source. According to the Dungeon Master's Guide, Desert Navigation is an easy DC-10 Wisdom Survival check, and this makes sense because visibility is high and daily weather changes are not really an issue, but characters also have to manage the constant effects of extreme heat. At or above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, exposed creatures without water must succeed on a constitution saving throw every hour or gain a level of exhaustion. The DC starts at 5 and increases by 1 point each hour. Creatures with heavy clothing, medium armor, or heavy armor have disadvantage, and creatures with resistance or immunity to fire damage automatically succeed. To review, exhaustion is a condition with 6 levels from disadvantage on ability checks to straight up character death. So extreme heat sounds really extreme. But remember, it only takes effect if your characters do not have access to water, and over the course of the day, that DC can probably only reach about 15, assuming the temperature is going to drop at night. And that's only a moderate challenge. So to give your players a grittier desert crossing experience, we turn to the Lone Hunter's Bushcraft Guide. For easy reference, it includes the Dungeon Master's Guide table of food and water needs, stating that medium creatures need a gallon of water per day, and this need is doubled in hot weather. But the guide expands on this notion, indicating that adventurers would need more food and water after a big fight, when traveling quickly, and to recover from exhaustion. It also provides an optional tolerance mechanic for heat exposure, where characters can only be exposed to extreme heat for a number of hours equal to their constitution modifier plus one. This tolerance is doubled if they have fire resistance and ignored if they are immune to fire damage. Every hour beyond their heat exposure tolerance, characters must roll a constitution save or suffer fire damage. More than just heat, I think heat tolerance accurately represents exposure to the unyielding desert sun. Without some kind of mobile canopy, your characters are definitely at risk of dehydration, heat stroke, and even hallucinations all of which are detailed in this guide. It even includes a mechanic for sandstorms, though unfortunately due to copyright restrictions I cannot play Darude Sandstorm in this video. Anyway, elevation aside, difficult terrain could still come into play if we're talking about a sandy desert, 
and our characters would then be forced to move at half their speed during travel and combat. Also, many deserts actually reach freezing temperatures at night because their skies are so clear and uninsulated. However, they're usually too dry for any ice to actually form. But in environments that are cold all year round and pretty equally dry, we get our next form of wilderness, tundra, where organisms have adapted rather to retain water but to keep their internal water from freezing. So we get things like small hardy shrubs, mosses, some grasses, zero reptiles, sorry white dragons, seasonal birds and bugs, but mammals are what dominate the landscape. There are four hardier peoples like goliaths, fearbulgs, dwarves, orcs, and hobgoblins would thrive, while other settlements would have low, round buildings and maybe tunnels to avoid the biting winds. Extreme cold calls for a DC 10 con save to avoid exhaustion, but it does not increase each hour, and resistance or immunity to cold damage, or simply wearing appropriate clothing, grants an automatic success. I think my mom wrote this rule. The DMG also has a few other rules for icy terrain. The Bushcraft Guide has mechanics for cold tolerance, blizzards and avalanches, and hypothermia. And both books cover foraging skill challenges, finding food and water using the wisdom survival skill with DCs based on the availability and the environment. And I like the conditional modifiers provided in the Bushcraft Guide to account for weather and climate. But this is one of those topics that will have its own video in the future. And it's not all bad for the party. I actually love this new condition, warmed up, which makes going inside for a break for hot chocolate a worthwhile adventuring activity for your D&D party. Somebody's mom definitely wrote that one. Anyway, the middle of this imaginary graph is where we get our temperate grasslands and forests. The environments that you think you know really well because you probably live in one, but our fields and forests of today have been radically changed over tens of thousands of years of human activity. For example, North America used to have giant sloths and actual dire wolves. Trees 10 feet wide and 200 feet tall were still common when the Northeast was settled a few hundred years ago. These ancient and mysterious landscapes are what inspired the myths that this game is based on. And today, we're destroying our tropical rainforests, the last real link to this truly fantastic history. I know I'm letting my environmentalists show a little much here, but my point is that temperate environments are so much more than just a quiet trail and a deer darting by. So without going much further down a forest tangent, let's just introduce our last wilderness environment, tropical forests, where wet and warm are both at their height, producing the most biodiverse ecosystem on the planet. There are over 40,000 species of just plants in the Amazon rainforest, while Tomb of Annihilation, the 250 page Wizards of the Coast campaign that takes place in a jungle, lists seven in its flora and fauna section. So I did some research, and according to Reddit user Yu Elgrin, who cataloged plants from previous editions and Dragon Magazine, 5e just might be the weakest edition, with everything plants provide, like food, drink, medicine, poison, and building materials. So you can bet I will be addressing this preposterous gap in multiple forest videos yet to come. The Bushcraft Guide, however, has over 100 unique plants with tables organizing them by biome, and that chapter alone makes me happy to have this book. And I haven't even mentioned the harvesting and crafting rules for 90 items from 45 creatures, the 25 Bushcraft survival gear items, 11 magic items, 7 ranger classes, the feats, spells, blessings, and charms, all the smart links to neat nature videos and background music, and a one-shot adventure all currently for eight dollars. Wow, definitely go check out Massimo Tartaro's Lone Hunter's Bushcraft Guide linked below. Yes, D&D is a game about dungeon crawling and dragon slaying, but at its core, it's about adventure. It's about a band of wanderers pushing into the unknown and coming out the other side as heroes. If you agree, give this video a thumbs up 
subscribe for more, and check out my video on random encounters to learn more about wilderness travel and D&D. Thank you for your support, happy Earth Day, and keep building.